It was a disappointing finish to the 2021-2022 season for the Brooklyn Nets, and now the team is revamping their coaching staff. To talk some Brooklyn Nets basketball, Nets beat writer for the New York Post, Brian Lewis joins me now. Brian, the Nets are expected to hire Mavericks assistant coach Igor Kokoshkov to join the Brooklyn bench and serve as an assistant to Steve Nash. So what can you tell us about this Kokoshkov and this hire? Well, I mean, Igor, he can provide Nash with somebody who's both an experienced uh, sounding board and a trusted one, right? So, I mean, they were together for four years in Phoenix. So they have that pre-existing relationship and he's got 30 years of pro coaching experience. I mean, he was the first, he was the first European assistant in the NBA. He was the first head coach in the NBA born outside of North, born and raised outside of North America. So he's got tons of experience. And then when you throw in the fact that he also, you know, he has a pre-existing relationship with Tyree from a year in Cleveland, it kind of makes sense to fill that role. Yeah, it's a move that could make a lot of sense for the Nets right there. Now, earlier this week, the Nets decided to defer the 2022 first-round pick owed to them by Philadelphia until 2023 when it will be unprotected. So it seemed like a risk-reward decision for me, Brian. Was this the right move for the Nets? Well, listen, people that follow this a lot closer than I do, and I just have to rely on their judgment, uh, everybody that I've talked to says that this draft is just simply not that good. Right. And that was before 112 kids pulled out of early entry. Right. So if you're just looking at it from the perspective of punting the pick from a weak draft into a better draft, that's one thing. Um, but then not to be too ghoulish about it, but there, you do have to consider, OK, James Harden's what looks like James Harden's descent and Joel Embiid's injury history. You also think that the Nets probably figure they have a chance of that pick being better next year than 23rd. And also, you have to understand, despite what you may have read elsewhere, they are not in the repeater tax this year. They are not supposed to be in the repeater tax next year. But they will be in the repeater tax the year after that, right? So when you're looking at 23-24, if things go sideways this coming season – the same way they did this season, or if the end result is unsatisfactory. You have to wonder, is Josai really going to pay what's going to be a historic amount of money, or is this team going to go through a few changes? Will there be a restructuring of what this roster looks like? And if that worst-case scenario happens, it's obviously a lot simpler to do that when you have two first-round picks and a second round pick versus having no picks this year. It gives you more flexibility in case you have to make some tough, hard decisions after next season. Flexibility is the name of the game, and it looks like that's what the Nets will be looking to do. That is Brian Lewis, New York Post Nets beat writer. Brian, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Oh, anytime, man.